Last night was a really fun, energetic, high, high energy night. I mean, we had a great drag show at, at nine o'clock to eleven. You know, everyone was having a good time. We come here to have community, to have a safe place to to gather, to to drink together, to cheers together, to to have a good night. And and last night was that until it wasn't. You just heard from Michael Anderson, who was one of the survivors of the mass shooting in Colorado Springs at Club Q. And we'll hear more about what he has to say because he describes the details and the chaos and the mass confusion. And it's genuinely disturbing. But let's talk about the details overall, because I think that as most people already know, this was a hate crime that was incited by hate mongers online with very large platforms. And this isn't something that's going to get them to rethink their rhetoric and do better. This is exactly what they wanted. So what happened in Colorado Springs? Well, as ABC News explains, a 22-year-old man has been charged with hate crimes for allegedly killing five people and injuring 25 others in a mass shooting at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado, official said. The suspect, Anderson Lee Aldrich, allegedly began shooting with a long rifle as soon as he walked into Club Q in Colorado Springs late Saturday night, Colorado Springs Police Chief Adrian Vasquez said. At least two people whom authorities described as heroes then confronted Aldrich and fought with him, which saved more lives, police said. Aldrich had considerable ammo and was extremely well armed, Colorado Springs Mayor John Southers told Good Morning America on Monday. So just stop for a moment and think about how bad this could have been. He was planning to do mass damage and he did a lot of harm, but had those two heroes not intervened, more people could have been killed. And at the time that I record this video, we don't know all of the victims, but two of the three of them are trans. So this is a tragedy that could have possibly been prevented had this individual not been whipped into a frenzy by hate mongers online. Now, some additional details about the suspect here. So according to NPR, a year and a half earlier, the suspect allegedly threatened his own mom with a homemade bomb, forcing all of their neighbors to evacuate. But yet, Colorado's red flag laws weren't triggered, and he ended up evading the law, which led to him legally purchasing the weapon that he used at Club Q. Now, the suspect is also reportedly the grandson of former GOP lawmaker from California, Randy Vopel, who compared the January 6th insurrection to the Revolutionary War. So when you have influences like that in your life who celebrate violence as a good thing, well, it's no surprise that this is what happens, especially if you already have a history of violence and you hold your own mother hostage. So you can see how somebody like that could easily be whipped into a frenzy by hate mongers online who claim that queer people are endangering children in the United States of America. We'll get to that in a second here, but first, let's get to Michael Anderson because he's going to share what happened. And just to give you a warning, this is very disturbing, but he thought he was going to die. So he explains what happened when the shooter came in. Let's listen. I was behind the bar working um, when I heard a few loud uh, shots go off. Um, I didn't know what it was at first, but I looked up and I saw the silhouette or shadow of a guy holding a, what looked like a rifle or some sort of long gun. And at that point, the shots kept going off. Um, so I, I ducked behind the bar. Um, and once I was on the ground, glass was just flying all around me. Um, and and that, at that point, I, I really got scared for my life. What was your plan? I mean, what are you thinking? Did you make a plan to hide? Were you going to fight this guy? What, what, did yeah. you, what was going through your mind? Uh, I definitely did not want to fight this guy, yeah. uh, for sure. That's I'm not really like that. <laughs> um, but um, I was just... I wanted to get out of there. I, 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 I was scared, I was trapped. I wanted to get out of that building. So I ran to the, the, the patio and I was hiding between, the, there's a space between a booth and a wall and I crouched right there on the ground in between that spot. And a, a group of individuals had uh, managed to open a closed door to an exterior patio and they all filed out and then they had to hop over a privacy fence to escape the club. Um, once they all got out, the door shut and they were holding it shut. They were holding it so no one else, you know, the shooter or anybody could get out. I didn't know that, but I, I, if I had run to try and get out, I wouldn't have been able to get out. So essentially I was trapped in, in that small little tiny room. Um, and it, it, I had a, a coworker with me and another woman with me and we were all just huddled together, just praying that it would end. 
did he come in that room? Um, all I saw, I popped my head up of, over the booth and I saw like the barrel of a gun like like poked into the patio room. I saw just the, the tip of it and it was at that point that I legitimately thought I was about to get shot. Like, I didn't know, I felt like a fish trapped in a barrel. I, I didn't know where to go. I, I, I didn't have my phone, I didn't have anything. So I was just so scared I wouldn't be able to talk to my mom or talk to anybody, um, uh, you know, in that situation. It's so terrifying. Yeah. Um, after that passes, you're still hearing the gunshots and then they uh, stop, right? So once I saw the, the rifle enter the room, I just put my head down and, and yeah. prayed. Uh, 10 seconds or so later, it got silent. All you could hear was uh, the, the, the dance music, you know, bumping through the club. Uh, but it was really, really eerie because normally when you hear that, you hear people, you know, having a good time. It was dead silent in there. Um, so it was silent for about a minute or two before I chose to get up and I, I, I didn't want to be trapped there anymore. I needed to do something. I needed to get out of there. So I got up and, and I went inside and that's when I saw the, the shooter being beat up by those very, very, very brave patrons or whoever. Were they on top of him at that point? They were, they were kicking him. He was lying on the ground. They were kicking him, punching him, yelling at him. And I don't know who that was, but I am so grateful. I will be grateful for whoever that is for the rest of my life yeah. because this could have been very different for me. Yeah. I can't imagine how terrified he must have been. I can't imagine how stunned and traumatized everyone who was there will be for the rest of their lives. It's just genuinely heartbreaking to know what happened. And I don't really have the words to comfort you. It's just sad. I feel nothing but heartbreak and um, sadness for all of the victims there. Now, let's not mince words when we talk about this. This is the fault of individuals like Matt Walsh and Chaya Raichik of Libs of TikTok. And I need people to understand that it's not like this is an accident. And now all of a sudden they're going to rethink the rhetoric that they use and stop spreading lies about queer people. No, this is what they wanted. When queer people die, no matter however they die, that's a victory for them. So if they can whip lunatics up into a frenzy and get them to do hate crimes against queer people, that's a victory for them. This is what they wanted. If they can deny gender from and care to trans youth and get them to kill themselves, that's a victory for them. They want queer people dead, which is why they do this. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later in a different video, but we need to be very clear. Blood is on the hands of individuals like Matt Walsh and Chaya Raichik of Libs of TikTok, who was already fear-mongering about a different organization from the same state mere hours after this mass shooting took place. So she was fear-mongering about an organization that hosts drag shows for queer youth, suggesting that this was a danger to them. And contrary to popular belief, Raichek doesn't just share videos videos of what other people says, she doxes people and encourages harassment against them, and the lies that she spread led to Boston Children's Hospital getting a bomb threat, and people haven't been following this story, but it's still happening. This week alone, Boston Children's Hospital had to be evacuated three different times due to bomb threats over their gender-affirming care that they provide to trans youth. So the reaction from these folks isn't going to be, oh my god, I can't believe that my words could, could have possibly influenced someone to do this. They're celebrating this. You know that that's what they're doing. And the right is largely trying to pretend as if they're not culpable and the blood isn't on their hands. But it is. When you lie about an entire community and tell people that they are a danger to children, this is what happens. Somebody tries to take up action against them to protect children or whatever this idiot's motive was. So we'll get into that more in a different video, uh, video, but this is just tragic and heartbreaking now. And I wanted to share the story here. And I absolutely feel horrible for the families of the victims and the victims themselves who just wanted to be in a space with other queer people where they could be themselves and not have to hide who they are. But this idiot infiltrated their space, murdered them, and now those lives are gone, never to come back. It's just, it's truly heartbreaking to think about, but this is something that unfortunately is going to continue to keep happening so long as right-wing hate mongers like Chaya Raichik and Matt Walsh continue to lie about queer people. And again, it's not just an unintended consequence of their rhetoric. It's exactly what they want.